My name is Lisa Boivin. I'm a member of the Dene Nukwai First Nation, and I am the daughter of Little Wolf and the Most Gentle. I made the connection between art and medicine as I was studying bioethics and I was learning about colonialism and institutionalized racism. Uh, as I was learning about colonialism, I reunited with my biological father. Uh, so it was uh, quite painful for me. Uh, I literally had to paint a safe space to heal. I had to understand who, who I was, who I am, who my family is, uh, their experience in the residential school system, and then carry it forward uh, to uh, medicine today. As a bioethics student, I use an arts-based methodology to uh, marry art and medicine, and I use this to address the inequities of Indigenous people in bioscientific medicine. I also use it as a coping strategy. Uh, it was a way of knowing, uh, as us Indigenous people like to say, it came to me intuitionally, literally out of uh, necessity. Uh, I had to paint, I guess, a safe space to heal. Uh, what happened was, as I was studying bioethics, I was learning about colonization, and at that time I was also reuniting with my biological father. I'm a 60 scoop survivor, and I'm from two generations of residential school survivors, so I was learning about this history uh, while I was learning about the inequities that Indigenous patients face. So at that time I had to paint a safe space to heal, to find out who, uh, who I am, to find out who I was in terms of the past, my family, um, to resolve past issues and uh, to create a, a, a place of mutual respect uh, where racism in medicine can be talked about. Sharing bioethics uh, started off as a painting for my mother. Uh, my mother uh, who adopted me, I like to call her my real mother because she raised me. And she said, Lisa, what is it that you do over there in bioethics? She said, I understand what a bioethics is and I understand a little bit what Dene medicine is, but I don't understand how you relate the two. So I painted a piece of uh, two circles of medicine uh, and then I connected a clinician and myself holding hands and we were creating a new circle of medicine. Uh, as uh, Dene people, we believe that we all have circles of medicine, all of us carry circles of medicine. And so in this painting, I'm joining hands uh, with a clinician, creating a circle of medicine, sharing bioethics for all who are listening. If you look at the painting, there are many bioscientific items that people recognize immediately. Uh, there's a thermometer, there's an x-ray, uh, there's a heart monitor and so on. People can identify those immediately. On uh, the indigenous side or the Dene side, uh, there are different aspects of traditional medicine. Uh, there's a raven who is master of the sky, squirrel, master of the uh, the ground. Uh, there are strawberries. All of my paintings uh, have strawberries in them. Uh, they're a very sacred item. I painted that feather in, in several paintings and I also carry that feather with me uh, whenever I uh, speak publicly about cultural safety. Uh, there is also a drum in the Dene Circle Medicine. Uh, Dene people believe that uh, the drum carries all of our ancestors. I also have a tobacco pouch and uh, we use uh, tobacco uh, pouches uh, for gratitude, uh, for uh, requests uh, to connect with Creator. My paintings rest on a foundation of strawberries and I came to that uh, I guess in a very uh, intimate moment with Creator. Uh, and uh, I find as an indigenous person uh, learning my language, I feel closer to uh, being a Dene woman, uh, closer to uh, the earth, uh, closer to medicine, closer to every everything. Uh, so the word in my language is, the word for strawberry in my language, uh, the translation is little heart. And when I learned uh, the word strawberry, uh, translated as little heart, I had a vision of my grandmother uh, dressing or butchering a caribou and opening up the caribou, uh, looking at the chest and seeing the heart resting in the flora that is our body. Uh, similarly, the strawberry rests in the flora of the earth and it's connected to everything and gives life to everything. Uh, caribous are also a part of my paintings. Uh, there is a teaching about 
the about survival, how the older caribou uh, teach the younger caribou to survive. The caribou tra trails deviate slightly uh, every generation, uh, just like our medicine deviates or changes every generation. We do that for survival as well. Uh, as I was preparing for this video, I, I, I talked to my father about the caribou. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I am from the Dene Nikwai First Nation, and that's in the Northwest Territories on the south side of Slave Lake. And uh, there were caribou there in the 1960s. And my dad told me that uh, there was a tradition where the young women would bring caribou to, the fa to their fathers and in very descriptive detail he talked about dressing the caribou and about the blood running through the fingers and the, uh, uh, the intimate and, and sacred tradition of, of, bringing, of dressing your first caribou and bringing it to the father. Uh, he also shared with me that My father also shared with me that as a boy he had seen the caribou in the 1960s and he was taken away to residential school and he was gone for 12 years and when he returned to our nation the caribou was gone. So when I paint the caribou antlers in the painting, I, I, I paint them for my father. I bring the, I bring the caribou to my father. It's a way of honoring the teaching. As I paint, I confront uh, the Indian residential school system and the 60s scoop. Well, I illuminate the resilience of indigenous peoples and indigenous cultures. My paintings always start on a black canvas, and uh, if you paint with oils or acrylics, you notice that black is the most aggressive color on the palette and always has the potential to uh, blot out uh, brighter colors. But on my paintings, the black will never blot out the bright strawberries, the bright flowers, the bright teachings. So I I am challenging the clinical and colonial gaze of the Indigenous patient while illuminating the resilience of Indigenous culture and Indigenous peoples. Canada's dark colonial history rests on the shoulders of all Indigenous peoples. But culture will never die. It will always be resilient. It will always be as bright and beautiful and alive as our peoples.